Hello YouTube fans, it's your boy Brad here with another video. Today we're going to be looking at a foam repair kit that I got from Springfield Speaker for a pair of vintage speakers that I, tower speakers that I have for my stereo system. The foam around one of my speakers just totally disintegrated and the cone was flopping around so got to trying to find a replacement woofer but they don't make this woofer anymore for this speaker uh, for these tower speakers again this is the S Infinity SM125 tower speakers that I bought gosh back in the mid 90s around 94 95 I think also it's probably the same as the same woofer practically uh, pretty close to the same setup as the Infinity SM122 so I got to looking online again I could not find woofers they don't make them anymore so I got to looking at repairs nobody showing how to repair this or if it can be repaired um, there's just really not much out there concerning these old speakers I'm old school so I like my tower speakers don't want to replace them so I figured I'd just try to fix it so I purchased this off of Amazon you can also get this kit from Springfield speakers website but I decided to go the Amazon way it's about the same price you get two foam replacements for about 30 bucks. Now, this kit, and I will put it right up here, the number on this kit, it is the 2A12B-Infinity, that's the item number kit. It's for the Infinity 12-inch foam speakers, uh, edge repair kit. You get two foams, you get the glue. It says compatible with, now here's the key, the 902-1187 woofer, the 902-2680, the 902-4477, uh, and the 902-5562. Does not mention this woofer on my speaker kit. So here it is, all, there's the glue that goes with this kit, and you get this little brush, it all comes taped down. Let's take a look at the speaker here, Will, really quick also you get some instructions here and of course you can go on YouTube and find instructions on how to do this but there's going to be a difference for this particular speaker your normal speaker here's the woofer let me mention the number and there's a alternative to this this is the 902-4300 made in Taiwan which is not mentioned in this speaker repair kit now here's the inter interesting thing about the way the foam is set up in these speakers. First, again, you got to follow. You got to get all the old foam off. You got to get all the glue off, and it came off pretty good. I'm not going to, you know, I didn't want to show all that. Um, you get a, a razor blade, scrape it off. You get alcohol, you clean around it, this and that. But here's the difference in this speaker, in the way the foam is is in this one versus your normal cone speakers okay I'm gonna grab this other one here normally and I'm, I'm just using this for illustration you see this lip right here around this normally goes inside here on top of the cone okay and it all sits in there the way that this particular speaker was designed is that the foam goes the lip is under, so it's glued underneath here. I flip it. It's glued underneath here. I haven't started the glue process. I haven't tried to glue it in yet because I'm trying to do this probably maybe in a three-part video, but all in one video. So you it's, you got to slip this under, and it glues in behind the cone, not on top of the cone. And then this part here, as normal, will glue in right here this could prevent uh, present excuse me a somewhat of a challenge in getting this done without getting the cone out of alignment the big thing you don't want to get the cone out of alignment so my plan is I'm gonna put the glue and glue the 
this inside rim, probably do it from underneath here, from the bottom, pull it back, put the glue around and work it that way, or I might go from the top, I really don't know. I think the way I'm going to approach this, guys, is that I'm going to pull the foam out like this and work the glue onto the foam. There's nothing on my brush this way and work my way around and then put the one side in and as I work my way around, pull the other side out and just keep working my way and then work it back that way. Alright guys, here we go. Changed my mind. I think I'm going to try to do this on camera. So, got my glue. And the glue is coming out. See that? It's just a uh, clear-ish looking... What is this stuff? Working ventilated, well ventilated. Metal foam, da 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 da. Rubber adhesive. I'm going to get a fan. Stand by. <laughs> okay, guys. I got a little fan over here. And I got my vent and my kitchen going over there. So it's a little noisy. Now my little fan making weird noise. Well, we're going to go forward with this. Okay, as we got that first little bit of glue out, then it's a little bit clear, a little bit runny. I'm kind of spread to get my brush to go in here a little bit. See how tacky that is. Woo we? All right, here we go. Let's pull this out. take this all the way out. I think this is the best. I'm just going to set it up. I got a couple strands from the glue in here. Matter of fact, what I'm going to do, let's move that out the way. Change 52. Trial and error. Again, I'm putting this glue on the on the top side of this instead of on the bottom side again because it has to go under the cone. way. Grab my comb. Grab this. Put it under on this side. Try to not get it everywhere. Get it under there. Get it under there. Get it under there. position. It looks right. That looks decent. That looks good. Okay. Let's look at this side, see what we got. I don't think that looks bad. You know, I could have did it this way. Learn as we go. Turn around and press. Rub it. 
nice and rub it. Try to get a good seal. Press and rub it. I'm going to put the glue cap on here because I'm not going to do the top yet. It's not all that pretty, but I think I got it on there. Like I say, you can reach under with your fingers. Got my thumb on top, index fingers on the bottom. Kind of rub it. This cone is, uh, well, feel kind of, almost kind of like a plastic. You know, a lot of these are made out of cardboard, some, uh, kind of a cardboard material. That might be what it is. I'm not doing the dust cover. I'm not taking it out. Um, I, but would have to order a more expensive kit, kit to do the dust cover, per se. So we got that part done. I'm gonna come back. Matter of fact, I'll do that now. And I saw this on one of the YouTube videos where they actually did run a little extra glue. I kind of almost want to do this with a Q-tip. Now I'm going to get a Q-tip. I'm going to try this with a Q-tip. Stand by. Alright guys, got me a couple Q-tips, so I'm going to try this. I keep getting these hairs from that brush. It looks like natural boar hair is what they did. Yeah, I like that better. And I'm just going to brush around this thing. Wet. All right, we made it all the way around. That side, I got a glob of glue. Right there. Guys, I really do think this is gonna work out fine. Let's just try it this way. It's so much better. It's so much easier on that spot. So that's what I should have did. Should have just used the glue thing. Ran the glue in the spot. I'm just going to use the glue stick. The blue two, I'm just going to hold it back and I'm going to run a bead. Around. There we go. Yeah, that's. Then once I run the bead, I'll spread it out with my brush. You know, and I think this is what the instructions said anyway. All right, we got the bead. Cap on. Grab our brush and we're gonna spread the glue out. I'm just gonna run it all the way.
All right, we got the glue spread out. Now we're gonna. I don't want to pull the the foam. I just want to press it down. And I'm just gonna use the four corner method. So hopefully the cone thing stays in the center. We don't want to pull it in any direction. So I'm not gonna worry about how it sets, whether it's even on all edges because of the way that it's glued underneath. So I'm just gonna leave it where it sets and hopefully that's gonna be the relaxation point. The cone is neutral. I mean the whatever you call the thing down in there. It's neutral so it moves up and down without rubbing the sides. It feels good. I didn't feel it. So we're just gonna press this down. Probably should have put some gloves on, and I do have some regular rubber gloves. Okay, guys, there it is. I'm gonna let that dry several days, and I get back with you, kind of show you what it looks like. We we'll play with it, we we'll install it, we'll take a listen, and go from there. All right, guys, it has been sitting almost 48 hours. I will eventually, probably this evening, go ahead and remount this into the tower speaker. The It's not a beautiful job. <laughs> I am going to uh, drill down here a bit so you can see this. But it's, it's not a beautiful job. I'm not going to... You can see there's quite a bit of glue. Um around the edges but I wanted to make sure it did not separate on me I think uh, there's definitely going to be a different in sound this foam that's on here I think is thicker uh, more uh, resilient than the foam that was on here and of course the other speaker is a little bit older uh, I'm not going to replace it because the foam actually is fine around it so and I'll do a comparison on it to kind of show you the difference in the two. And I just kind of push on and kind of show you that. Alright, here's the SM125 tower speaker. This is what it looks like. This is the one that's in very good shape. I'm going to drill down and let's get both of these side by side and take a look. Let me get in a little closer. Let's look at it from down here. Let's look at it from down here and kind of push on that, kind of push on this one and be reminded that this one still has the ring on it. This, there's this ring and then there's all of these, these bolts here. So that's why this looks like this because there's this plastic ring. But that definitely feels stiffer. That is stiffer. So this one's going to be definitely more restricted. There's going to, it's going to be a different sound. You can see how thick that one is. Well, how tall it is. How tall it is. And this one, just to push on the foam itself. This is a definitely thicker foam. This is a definitely thicker foam. So, not the same. Not the same. But, we'll see how it all plays in the end once I get it installed and I'll just kind of show you it moving in, moving around I can't really show you the difference in sound I don't think but we'll see how that works out alright guys got the speaker mounted the one over here to our right is the replacement the woofer that we just fixed and over here to our left is the new one I'm going to let you hear a sample of the beat that we're going to be hitting it with, but I'm not going to play it through. you just be watching in a muted stage of the woofer moving. So this is the beat we're going to hit it with. That's the beat we're going to be hitting it with, but I don't want to get a copyright. So hopefully that was short enough not to get a copyright. <laughs> so let's take a look. Don't make it. 
Yankees fan next to Passenger who wanna Okay, guys, in conclusion, I am satisfied with that. Uh, unless you're really, really into stereo files, stereo phonics, um, you're really not. I do know that this one is a little bit, there's more flex, there's, there's more bounce in it. There's, there is, it's a little bit fuller if you go up to the speaker. This one with the repair woofer in it, not quite, but the sound, there's no distortion, there's no flopping around as it was when the whole foam, the foam around the speaker had just torn away. So it's just flopping all over the place, making all kind of weird noise. So I can deal with that. If you have acidities and you have both of them are rotted out, I say the kit is, is fine. I, I think it works. But that's what I got, guys. Hey, if you like what you see, guys, if you like this channel, please at least hit the, hit the like button for me. Uh, hit the subscribe button, wherever side that is on. Y'all be good. I hope that helps somebody out. Y'all be blessed.